23 Minecraft glitches that are actually helpful. With a game as open as Minecraft, glitches are inevitable. And while most get patched out in between updates, some become a staple of gameplay. So if you're looking to get ahead, these glitches might just do the trick. And hey, the YouTube wizard bets me that you can't subscribe to the channel before this arrow hits me. So to prove them wrong, launch that red sub button down below. It's free, and it helps out a ton. Number one, seeing through walls would be a superpower that most of us would love to have. But Steve isn't exactly Superman, so the idea is a pipe dream. Or it would be if we stayed at this FOV. See, the way that field division works in Minecraft, if you drink a speed two potion and then turn your slider up to Quake Pro, then you can get some really wide vision. And then all it takes is lining yourself up next to a wall and the job is done. So if you suspect that your friend might be hiding things around your base, this might be the perfect shot to find it. And it'll make Green's job of hiding his even tougher to do. Number two. With the 1.17 update, spectators are finally able to see under lava, which is great. It allows for some new fun angles and it doesn't mess with the balancing. But while that's nice for them, us in survival don't have the pleasure. As it is, even if we drink a fire resistance potion, we still can't see through the burning magma. But that all changes when we add a slab to the mix. Now, with this half block, we can simply swim underneath and hold the jump button to see through the lava layer. And while this seems like a natural fit for the nether, it even works in the overworld, making diamond hunts even simpler. Number three, since the 1.16 update, the nether has been a lot more dangerous to traverse. But while we do have new hostile mobs in the way of piglins and hoglins, there is a glitch that might help ease the pain. Now, to pull this off, hold up your shield the second that you go through a portal. Then, after the dimension loads in, you'll find yourself on the other side virtually unchanged. However, the game keeps your shield held up even while you're attacking or sprinting, meaning you can fight mobs as usual while still blocking their attacks. Now, the glitch doesn't allow you to eat or place blocks while you're doing this, but the other payoff is pretty worthwhile. Number four, Minecraft has a surprising amount of flying mobs. But while we're all familiar with blazes, phantoms, and bats on that list, there are two unlikely candidates that also fit. Even though Strider doesn't seem much for aviation by itself, these things can actually be persuaded to the skies. Through the help of a fishing rod and a scroll wheel, all it takes to do this glitch is switching on and off of the item rapidly in your hotbar. And bam, just like that, you can fly, or at the very least fall with style on the back of your Strider. And hey, the same even goes for pigs and carrots in the overworld, though they'll have a rougher land than the Strider does. Number five, in a lot of ways, single player can be a much riskier operation than a server. At the very least, you've got no one else to blame if something goes wrong. So say you're playing by yourself late one night and happen to stumble into a nether river. Now the situation does look pretty dire, but not unsalvageable. You see, one major exploit in the single player system is the ability to pause whenever you like. And that's where the saving grace comes in. By quitting and rejoining constantly, you can use the brief seconds of spawn protection each time to maneuver yourself out of the situation. Is it cheating? Sure, but hey, who said exploits have to be fair? Number six, hidden doors are a very slick system to show off in your base, but the standard levers and buttons make for a pretty bland input to use. So that's where we need to get creative and resort to this classic bit of knowledge. Arrows and Endermen don't mix, meaning you can't even land a shot on it if the mob was stuck in place. So if we were to tuck the Enderman in a minecart like such, you notice how any arrow shot at him will physically bounce off and even go through walls. And if we happen to tuck a target block behind that very wall, then this becomes our brand new button and quite the spectacle too. Number six, X-ray vision sounds like a dream come true, or at the very least, an illegal hack. But that's a shame, because this feature could be essential for torching up all the caves around a base or a farm. So to solve that problem through a glitch instead of a mod, we'll just need a composter and a piston. Simply tuck yourself in the composter, flip the switch, and you'll be pushed down, now with the ability to see new bright caves. Which is cool, but if you're early game and don't have any redstone to your name, then don't sweat it. You can also do this with fallen gravel blocks like so. So if you're looking for caves nearby, maybe try this instead. Number eight. One of the often unseen limitations to Minecraft is the idea of the entity cramming limit. And while most of us don't breed enough cows, sheep, or villagers to see this, there might be a practical use if you come close to that number. As you'll see, there's a certain amount of force given to the player when another entity pushes them. And this can get really obvious in a one by one crammed hole. So if you were to take a chunk of these mobs, fill up a space, and then start jumping with an elytra, then their small pushes might be just able to give you enough momentum to rock it out of there. Making this both the weirdest and the most effective elytra launcher I've seen. Scene. Number nine, roller coasters are a great thing, but powering a minecart is not an easy or cheap task to fulfill. So instead of wasting hours away in the caves hunting for gold and redstone, why don't we find a cheaper motor up here on the surface? And for that, it might be time to fire up the villager breeder. Now I've talked about the benefits of mixing boats and minecarts plenty of times, but we can actually take it up a notch by adding a villager to that very boat. At that point, the cart keeps moving along at great speed on that track, allowing you to hitch a ride without ever running up the cost to go with it. Number 10, Bedrock Edition is known to 
have more than a few quirks in its code. And while some of those can be infuriating, others are just hilarious. Like how you can make a fully functioning zip line in your Minecraft world. No joke, if you start swimming in a water column and then step out, you'll still be swimming even in midair. From there, give yourself some chains as a ceiling and you can sail along this without a care in the world. Granted, you'll need to make sure to have blocks above your head to stay in that state, but that's a simple trade-off for the chance to break the game's physics engine. Number 11. End portal frames, much like bedrock, are supposed to be unbreakable. Though, just like bedrock, that unbreakable tag is really just a suggestion, not much of a rule. And sure, while we could in theory break these the same way that we blow up bedrock in the nether roof, a much simpler option is finding some fungus and some bone meal to do the job. If you sprout up a big red mushroom like such next to the portal, you can wipe out three frames at a time, all while keeping the actual portal intact. No joke, it even works if you get all of the portal frames busted, letting you design your own portal frame and then some. Number 12. And after breaking your end portal frames through one way or another, now you've got the perfect opportunity to make yourself a sand and gravity block farm. Through the help of slime blocks in the end portal, we can bounce these blocks into the next dimension and, let's not mince words, duplicate them. And you might ask, why even bother doing this? But since sand isn't renewable through intended methods, then many technical communities have decided it's fair to duplicate sand blocks through this method. Though I'm honestly not looking to pick a side in that argument. If you want to use it in your world, then here's how. But if not, don't sweat it. Number 13. Starting a farm is a slow process, and while bone meal might help you cut down on the growth cycle, it can still be a pain to break the crop and get a measly return. Though, if we look over to Minecraft's loot tables, we might be able to tip the scales. You see, the way that the Fortune 3 enchantment works, we can even see the benefit when we break our carrots and potatoes. So, sure enough, the next time that you go to harvest, maybe bust out the Fortune 3 pickaxe instead of your fist. Just that simple change could net you an extra item for each crop planted, which, trust me, adds up. Number 14. Finding a reliable fuel source in Minecraft is a tough concept. Whether it's charcoal or blaze rods, these farms take a lot to get up and running. And while the 1.17 update should have made the choice obvious, unfortunately, we still aren't able to take lava buckets out of the lava cauldrons, making renewable lava farms a far cry from automatic. So if you're fed up with all that setup too, then these carpet machines might be the easy way out. Make no mistake, this is item duplication. But if you're cool with that, then this newfound carpet is sure to keep your furnaces up and burning for the foreseeable future. Number 15. Elytras are great for flying, but hovering, not so much. Which unfortunately makes these really impractical for any kind of precise action like building or mining. But if you're looking to keep the precision of pillaring or bridging without leaving anything behind, then scaffolding could do the trick. And no, not like this, but rather like this. You see, if you spam right click enough on the top of a scaffolding stack, you'll eventually see a floating bit off in the distance. Now, this isn't a real block, and it's only visible on the client side, but you can walk on it just the same. So if the server has flying enabled, this can clearly help out for manhunts or master building. Number 16. Looting 3 is an amazing enchantment, which makes it a real shame that Mojang only intended it for swords. Though, even if Mojang intended it one way, that doesn't mean we have to play by those rules. Through the help of the offhand function, it's possible to throw a ranged weapon in our second hand and still have the looting enabled. From there, whether it's instant health on a bunch of zombies, a bow for creepers, or even snowballs on a blaze, the looting enchantment is applied just like the sword. And better yet, no damage is actually done to the looting weapon, letting you get away scot free and still benefit from the tool's power. Number 17. If you don't have an ender chest, then hiding your valuables is a tricky business. And while we've talked plenty about the creative ways to stash your loot, this might just be a new favorite. While playing in Bedrock Edition, if you push a block into a chest minecart, then, even though it's still there, you can't see the entity. And here's the best part. We can open it up just the same. Just make sure your crosshair lines up like such where you can't see the outline of the block, and then you'll be safe to tuck something in the bookcase and know it's safe and sound. And hey, as an added bonus, finally bookshelves have an actual use. Number 18. Beacons basically define the later stages of the game in Minecraft. But what these are good for in haste, jump boost, and speed, apparently they lack in regeneration. Now, that's not to say that they don't give regen, clearly they do, but a glitch in the code prevents these beacons from giving the full regen after activated. So, to change that, we can fix this glitch with another exploit, and use this system to deactivate and reactivate the beacon for a faster regen. Going from a full regen of 72 seconds with the normal one, to roughly 51 seconds with our modified. So if you're looking to save some seconds next time you're in danger, and this workaround's what you need. Number 19. 
If you're not prepared, the Wither can be a tough boss to fight, but one of the biggest pain points to fighting this thing is just how destructive it is. So if you're looking to score a nether star without leaving behind a giant crater, then I suggest we take this dilemma to the end dimension. Here, we can dig ourselves the perfect spot to fight the thing, and that's of course, right underneath the dragon's fountain. Down there, if you summon a Wither like such on the ground, then it'll spawn inside of the bedrock barrier. And from there, you could choose to let it suffocate or attack to your heart's content, both for an easy win. Number 20. Let's face it, there are a lot of benefits to going on top of the nether roof. You could build gold farms, nether hubs, and all without burning in lava. But even though it's nice to be on top of the world, some things only exist in the dimension below. So to fix that and bridge the gap between the two, a classic solution is to break bedrock like so. If we manage to pull together some TNT, pistons, and plenty of trial and error, we can break through the unbreakable block and reach the underworld below. Though, just remember where in the roof you came in in the first place. Otherwise, you'll be breaking a lot of bedrock, only to find more bedrock underneath. Number 21. Keeping mobs out of your base is not a small problem by any means, especially on harder difficulties. But if a massive wall isn't exactly matching your aesthetic, then we'll need to find some other avenue for stopping these foes. And luckily, there's an exploit in their pathfinding that allows just for that. By digging a big trench like such, filling it up with string, and then placing carpet on top, we can walk across just fine, but the mobs will be left on the other side completely clueless, allowing us to use a lot more color inside of the base, and perhaps building one of the prettiest moats that you're gonna see anytime soon. Number 22. Finding buried treasure in Minecraft is easier said than done. Now sure, it's easy to find the buried treasure maps themselves, since they stick out in big sunken ships, but actually finding the place where X marks the spot it's not as simple. And while there are plenty of little tips to help you pinpoint it, if you're on bedrock, the solution is as simple as a riptide trident. By launching yourself into nearby walls in the sand bed, you can glitch through the blocks and find the chest just like that. Is it the most practical method? I'm not entirely sure. But when it's this ridiculous, I'll gladly take another excuse to use my trident. Number 23. While Minecraft might not have the most accurate physics engine on the market, there is one thing that's true in-game and in real life. You can't walk through solid matter. Or can you? Now, surely you can't do it like this, but with the help of shulker boxes, the line gets a lot more blurry. Since these containers expand their hitboxes when you open them up, we can use that to push ourselves through solid walls. Place the face in this way, open it up, and find yourself squeezed out on the other end. And you can even use this for hidden floor entrances like such. Just leave a gap underneath and a block over top, and you'll disappear in a pretty sneaky fashion. And with that, folks, glitch that red sub button down below and have a good one. All right?